there may be a need to replace the motor. It could be noisy. The customer may be complaining about noise issues coming from the, the Venter motor. Uh, or it could just be seized up and you're going to need to replace this Venter motor. Okay, so what you're going to want to do first of all is identify the screws. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, four screws holding this to the collector box. Okay, so we're going to need to remove those four screws. One, two, three, four. Remove that. We're going to need to disconnect or loosen up this, this rubber bibby up top. Okay. And that way we're able to remove the motor. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to want to do is obviously disconnect power to the furnace. Make sure you got power disconnected. You're going to locate your power leads. Okay. Right here in this wiring harness. There's your power to the motor. Okay. And then you're going to identify your screws like I mentioned. Using a quarter inch nut driver or if you have a drill handy, even better. A little quicker that way. And we're going to go ahead and remove these four screws. And three. I don't want to lose these. I want to put them in a safe spot. So my motor right now is pretty much disconnected. Okay. I'll disconnect my pressure switch leads. Kind of clear everything out of its way here. And let's go ahead and disconnect the switch. Not as easy as it looks. These things are on there pretty good. There's one there. And two. All right. So there you have it. There's my Venter motor. With the motor disconnected, okay, again, just make sure that the gasket material is intact, okay, and it's not deteriorated in any way. This one here looks pretty good, so I can go ahead and put the new motor back, back in there, okay? So it's quite simple. Again, locate the screws that's holding that motor to the collector box, okay? We, in this case, we had that one clamp that was holding the motor to the rubber bibby here, your exhaust, and you're done. So let's go ahead and put the motor back in there. Make sure your clamp's in there. So again, there we go. I could just put the one in there, nice and loose, and line the rest up as I go. You want it tight enough, but you don't want it to crack the motor housing. Okay, so now that I got my motor in place, I'm going to make sure that my pressure switch tubes are in the exact same spot I found them. Okay, put those back in its spot. Same thing with the other side here. In its spot. Okay, and obviously my pressure switch connections as well. Line up my connectors. Let's get this clamp on there, just the way we found it, nice and snug, okay? If you don't get this thing nice and tight, what will happen is you'll get water coming out of there through the combustion process, and you'll have water all over the place. So again, make sure that your clamps are on nice and tight, your screws are back in place, you're all wired up and ready to go. That's it, you just replaced the venter motor.